I'm Akhil, the founder at Armor AI, but this isn't my first company. I've built products in the past that did not succeed. Some of them were actually quite promising, but they failed for reasons I did not expect. Back in 2018, I started a tech consulting company and it did quite well. And like every optimistic founder, I started building products on the side, hoping that one of them would take off. And I funded the products from the revenue of my tech consulting firm. Today, I want to talk about one of those products. It was called Dominate AI. It was a killer sales intelligence tool. And while building it, I followed all the best advice. I hired engineers from the big name companies, the kind of people who had worked at scale, shipped products used by millions, and knew how to write beautiful code. But that decision ended up killing my startup. And in this video, I want to tell you exactly why that happened. There's a lot you can learn here. If you're building a product, whether you're a founder, an early engineer, or even a PM, this video can save you millions of dollars and months of pain. Because what I'm about to walk you through is not just a story about engineering, it's a lesson in how startups are fundamentally different from big companies and how misunderstanding can destroy everything. So let's get into it. Problem number one, over-obsessed with the tech stack. So engineers from big firms tend to optimize for elegance, not urgency. My team created perfect separation of concerns, front-end, back-end, cloud, infra, but we didn't even have 10 users. They spent weeks picking the right framework instead of shipping something people could actually use and give us feedback on. They debated API structure, but we didn't even know if the product had any real value. At an early stage startup, you don't need a scalable architecture. You need a working prototype. Problem number two, lack of end-to-end -end thinking. The engineers I had hired had always worked in big teams. Someone else handled the design, someone else did the testing, someone else set up the cloud. So when they were asked to build features end-to-end, -end, it broke them. They waited for tasks to be assigned, they didn't take ownership. Nobody said, hey, should we even build this feature? Is there a faster way to validate this idea? They saw themselves as engineers, not as problem solvers. Problem number three, over-engineering kills velocity. We had eight microservices running on Kubernetes before we even had PMF. CI-CD pipelines with 14-step security scans when only three people were using the product. We deployed a custom machine learning stack before we even had figured out if the user needed AI in the first place. This is what happens when you bring late stage habits to an early stage battlefield. Problem number four, premature scaling. We built features for millions of users even though we had less than 10. Load balancers, redundant failover zones, auto scaling groups, all set up before the first real customer used the product. And if you think about it, our goal wasn't to solve today's problems. It was to future proof for an imaginary tomorrow. And what I learned is startups die from indigestion, not starvation. We were bloated before we even got hungry. Problem number five, tool obsession over problem solving. We spent days setting up Prometheus, Grafana, tracing tools and observability dashboards thinking that that should give us a lot of data, right? But even then, we couldn't tell what our most used feature was or why users were churning. We were able to track every metric except the one that actually mattered. Do users even love this? Problem number six, fear of messy work. This isn't clean enough. This violates solid principles. We should abstract this logic. The engineers that I had hired avoided quick and dirty code even when that's exactly what we needed to move fast and test. At a startup, ugly code that delivers value beats perfect architecture that delays learning. Problem number seven, too many dependencies too early. We pulled in 50 plus NPM packages, complex authentication libraries, multiple message queues just for a login and a dashboard. The thing is, every dependency came with its own complexity, bugs, and batch cycles. We were building it like it was an open core product, when in fact, what we needed was speed and simplicity. Problem number eight, refactoring as a full-time job. Every few weeks, the code base was torn down and rebuilt. They said things like, we're not happy with the folder structure, let's rewrite this in a cleaner way, this design pattern scales better. The problem is, users were not asking for this, and users did not care what the project structure looked like. Users want to solve their own problems. And what I realized was that the engineers were solving imaginary problems, not real ones. Problem number nine, this is my favorite, blindly following best practices. 
we followed 12 factor app guidelines, DDD, hexagonal architecture, like it was gospel, but no one asked whether those principles applied to a three person team with no PMF. They did what they were trained to do, follow rules and not challenge assumptions. Problem number 10, over engineering security. We implemented OAuth2, rotating JWTs, encrypted session stores, anomaly detection. For a product with zero paying users, security is important, but at this stage, we needed to prove utility, not pass a pen test. And this ended up costing a lot of engineering time. Now, these are all the problems that we faced. But as I mentioned earlier, I've learned a lot from these. And I now want to go over some things that you can take away so you don't repeat all of these mistakes. I hope you're enjoying this video. I just want to take a quick minute to tell you something important. I'm starting a new engineering leadership cohort, which is meant for people aiming for engineering leadership positions. In this cohort, you don't just learn technical stuff like advanced system design, cloud architecture and data architecture, distributed systems, AI driven system design, but you also learn important things like how to build a team, how to hire the right engineers, how to rally them around an idea, how to get them to build great products and how to think in a business driven way. It starts on the 1st of June and there are very limited slots. So there's extremely high demand, but there's a link to the application form in the description of this video. Please fill it out and I'll get in touch with you only if you're a great fit. This is a great opportunity to learn with other like-minded people. All right, now back to the video. Solution number one, set hard limits on engineering effort per feature. In a startup, time is your scarcest resource and not engineering talent. If a feature takes more than two to three days to ship, that's a red flag. At this stage, you're not building to scale. You're building to learn, which means you don't have to build massive features, just a scrappy version of the feature you want to implement. Every feature should have a budget in terms of time and complexity. If something drags on, you need to have a conversation and ask this question. Is this the fastest, scrappiest way to test if this idea is worth building? Speed of iteration matters way more than polish, always. Solution number two, use constraints to get things done. When you give engineers infinite time, modern tools and no constraints, they'll architect like Google, but give them tight timelines, minimal tooling and imperfect conditions and suddenly magic happens. Real innovation comes from constraints, like building a dashboard in just one day using a React.js template or validating a feature with zero backend, just a shared Google sheet or mocking the API response manually before building any infrastructure. Constraints force you to think about the product and not just the code. Solution number three, redefine success as learning and not code quality. Early stage success is not measured in uptime or clean abstractions. It's measured in feedback loops. You don't need scalable architecture, you need fast signals from real users. A rough, unscalable prototype that leads to 10 pieces of user feedback is more valuable than a clean production-ready system that no one uses. The goal is not to build right, it's to build fast enough to know what right even is. Solution number four, shrink the roadmap ruthlessly. Most startups overbuild. You don't need a roadmap with 15 features. You need a plan to validate just one thing. Before building anything, ask, is this the riskiest assumption we have right now? Does this feature teach us something new? Cut the features that don't push this learning forward. And remember, build like you're running out of time because you actually are. Solution number five, hire journalists who think like founders. In the early days, you don't need backend specialists or infrastructure wizards. You need product-minded journalists who are okay jumping into messy code, writing front-end one day and scripts the next, testing with users and iterating non-stop. Hire people who ask, why are we building this? and what's the fastest way to get this in front of our users. A generalist who ships is 10x more valuable than a specialist who plans. Solution number six, make your MVP as the maximum velocity prototype. Redefine MVP not as minimum viable product, but a maximum learning tool, built to validate an assumption, not to impress other engineers. So you should be asking, what can we ship in just two days that proves someone even wants this? Solution seven, enforce decision cost discipline. Every technical decision should come with a price tag, time, complexity, and dependencies. If the answer to why are we doing it this way is because it's cleaner, that's just not good enough. Instead, you have to ask, what does this cost us in time to market or in iteration speed? Solution number eight, avoid resume driven development. Don't let engineers over engineer just to use the latest tech they want to put on LinkedIn. 
Your priority needs to be to find product market fit and not just build a resume by using all the latest technologies. Solution number nine, tie engineering to user impact and not tickets. Engineers should know who the user is, what problems they're solving, how success will be measured, and you can't let engineers build in a vacuum. Otherwise, they'll optimize for elegance, not impact. Solution number 10, celebrate ugly wins. Encourage hacky fixes that generate signal. Shipped something in a day that gave you real feedback? Well, reward that. Build a culture where quick learning is more valuable than perfect execution. So yeah, my engineers killed my startup, but the truth is it wasn't just on them, it was on me. I hired like we were scaling, I built like we already had users, and I let process take priority over proof. If you're building something, whether you're a founder, an early engineer, or even just thinking about your first product, remember this. Speed beats scale. Clarity beats clean code and learning beats elegance. Market share isn't won by startups that have the best technical architecture. They're won by teams that figure out what matters, but in the fastest way possible. Today at Armor AI, we build very differently. We validate before we optimize, we ship dirty, learn fast and refactor later. We've replaced slide decks with experiments and perfect sprints with fast feedback loops. And honestly, that shift changed everything. If this video helped you, share it with someone building their first product. Maybe it saves them a few hundred hours as well. And if you've got stories of your own, your mistakes, lessons, scars, drop them in the comments and I'll read all of them. Thanks for watching. I'm Akhil and see you in the next video.